In an article published on the Catholic Herald website on June 19, 2015, President Barack Obama of the United States of America called for world leaders to heed Pope Francis' message on climate change. The president was quoted as saying, I welcome His Holiness Pope Francis' encyclical and deeply admire the Pope's decision to make the case, clearly, powerfully, and with the full moral authority of his position, for action on global climate change. As we prepare for global climate negotiations in Paris this December, it is my hope that all world leaders and all God's children will reflect on Pope Francis' call to come together to care for our common home. President Obama endorsing and working together with the Pope is actually a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. For example, Revelation chapter 13 in the Bible talks about two nations symbolized by two beasts which end up working together in order to enforce the mark of the beast upon the world. Those two nations are the United States of America and the Vatican. In case you didn't know, the Vatican is a nation. It's considered the smallest country in the world. The Bible indicates that a beast symbolizes a kingdom, which is what we would call a nation or country. Daniel chapter 7 talks about four beasts, and verse 23 reads, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. The first beast or nation in Revelation chapter 13 is a leopard-like beast, and it is described in verses 1 through 10. I'm going to be comparing some of its characteristics to the Vatican to show you how the Vatican matches up with its description. I'm not going to go over every single detail for time purposes, but I'll show you the ones that make it obvious that this beast is the Vatican. In verse 1 it says that upon his heads is the name of blasphemy. The definition of blasphemy, according to the Bible, is to claim the attributes of God for yourself, including claiming to be God or claiming to have the authority to forgive sins. For example, when Jesus stated, I and my Father are one, in John chapter 10 verse 30, the Jews wanted to stone him. Verse 33 says, The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. How does this apply to the Vatican? The Pope, who is the head of the Vatican, is called by titles belonging to God alone. One of those titles includes Holy Father, no mere man has the right to be called Holy Father. This is a title that Jesus called the Father in heaven when he prayed to him in John chapter 17 verse 11, saying, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, as we are. In addition, if you think calling the Pope Holy Father is bad enough, it gets worse. In the 16th century, Cardinal Robert Bellarmine stated this, All names which in the scriptures are applied to Christ, by virtue of which it is established that he is over the church, all the same names are applied to the Pope. In 1895, an article from the Catholic National said this, The Pope is not only the representative of Jesus Christ, but he is Jesus Christ himself, hidden under the veil of flesh. Pope Pius V said this, the Pope and God are the same, so he has all power in heaven and earth. Pope Leo XIII said this about the role of the Pope, We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. Titles used for the Pope and statements about the papacy from popes in the past have equated the Pope to God, making it obvious that the papacy, the head of the Vatican, has committed blasphemy. Now about the Pope claiming to be able to forgive people for their sins. When Jesus told a man that his sins had been forgiven in Mark chapter 2 verse 5, verses 6 and 7 states that the scribes reasoned in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Therefore, according to the scriptures, only God has the right to forgive people for their sins. Yet what do we find the Pope doing? Here's an article from July of 2013. It's entitled, Pope Francis offers Catholics forgiveness for their sins on Twitter during World Youth Day. What this was about was offering Catholics forgiveness of sins which will decrease their time in purgatory if they follow the Pope on Twitter. No wonder he has nearly 7 million followers on Twitter. They don't want to go to hell. Catholic priests also claim to be able to forgive people for their sins. They supposedly got this authority from the Pope, who the Church claims is the successor of the Apostle Peter.
The next verse that indicates the leopard-like beast of Revelation chapter 13 represents the Vatican is verse 3. It states, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. In part 7 of this series entitled Pope's Deadly Wound Healed, I go into detail about how the papacy received a deadly wound when the Pope was taken into captivity in 1798 by Napoleon's general Berthier. The world thought that the papacy would never recover. However, soon after, a new Pope was elected and the Vatican started regaining its power. The Bible says that it will get to the point where the world will wonder after the beast. It will wonder after the Vatican papal system. And we can see that in our day and age. The Pope is constantly in the news and he is well favored by a lot of people and politicians worldwide. So this Pope has done something fascinating. Yeah, yeah, he's getting good, man. And it's always depressing when you, you look at religious leaders and you think, like, if, if what they say was actually true, the Bible is actually true, God was actually true, how would they actually act if that was true? And they never live up to that standard. But this is what that moral leader would act like. If he actually was following, like, it, it, was, it was really true. He would be looking out for literally billions of people who are going to be negatively affected by this and being willing to attack, as Jesus did, the economic elites who are causing it. And so uh, it's still all BS, but I do like Pope Francis. Moving on to the next verse, verse 7. It reads, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. The Vatican made war with true followers of Jesus and still does so today. Albeit, today's warfare is more subtle than it was during the Dark Ages. During the Dark Ages, up until about 1600 AD, the Catholic Church openly persecuted and killed anyone who opposed the Pope and wanted to follow the Bible as opposed to submit to the authority of Rome. Some of these Christian groups included the Manichaeans, who were slaughtered in campaigns all over Rome between 372 and 444 AD. Numerous thousands of victims died. The Albigensians, by the command of Pope Innocent III, were wiped out in 1209 AD. An estimated 20,000 to 70,000 were killed. The same year, the Carcassones were slain. Afterwards, a 20-year war against the Cathars was waged. About half the population of southern France was eliminated. Then, in 1232 AD, the Inquisition was founded to search and destroy all surviving and hiding heretics. An estimated 1 million victims lost their lives. Then we have other groups like the Waldensians who barely survived Rome's persecution, and that was after being persecuted for 600 years. There was even one Spanish inquisitor by the name of Torquemada, who alone was responsible for the burning of 10,220 victims. Today the Vatican doesn't have as much power as it did in the past to openly persecute those who oppose her. But that is about to change in the near future. The Bible indicates that the Vatican will regain its power and persecute all those who reject the mark of the beast. And the United States is going to help her. With that being said, let's see how the second beast of Revelation chapter 13 represents the United States of America. Verse 11 states, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. This beast, this nation, is symbolized by a lamb. The lamb is also used as a symbol for Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verse 29 states, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Moreover, Jesus' work was characterized by liberating people from sin and the devil. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. So the nation that this lamb represents is a Christian nation which stands for liberty. And the United States of America was founded on Protestant principles and is called the land of liberty. There is even the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor in New York City. The two principles of liberty the United States was founded on are civil and religious liberty. That simply means the right to be ruled without a king and without a pope. 
One of the reasons why the United States was founded on these principles is because popes and kings worked together to persecute Christians in Europe who did not want to submit to the authority of the pope. So, when persecuted Christians fled to the United States, they established these principles to protect themselves. However, the Bible says that the second beast of Revelation 13, the lamb-like beast, the United States of America, would speak as a dragon. The dragon is a symbol for Satan, according to Revelation chapter 12 verse 9, which says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The devil stands for the opposite of what Jesus stands for. Jesus came to set people free, but the devil keeps people in bondage. In other words, the liberties that the United States has long enjoyed will soon come to an end, and people will be forced to accept the mark of the beast. The Bible speaks of a time when the United States of America would join forces with the Vatican in order to enforce the mark of the beast upon the citizens of America before implementing it worldwide. Current events show the U.S. and the Vatican taking steps in that direction by the President of the United States endorsing the Pope's encyclical on climate change. The two are working together. Of course, there are a lot more details to the subject of the Mark of the Beast, and if you'd like to learn more, please click on the link to the free online Bible study guides in the description box. You will not only learn more about prophecy, but also about many other subjects of the Bible. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. Subscribe if you're new. And if you'd like to check out some of my past videos, just click on the screen. I have a lot of good Christian videos, which I'm sure you'll enjoy if you liked this one. Also, check out some of my popular playlists, which I'll leave a link to in the description box as well. God bless.